Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and today we're continuing our series on assembling your Wire EDM starter kit. In today's video, we're going to be covering machining vat assembly and waterproofing. Now we can move on to assembly of the machining vat. This is the vat that holds the dielectric and your work during the EDM process. Okay, problem. This isn't gonna hold water, right? Because it's two pieces. So what we're gonna to need to do is join these pieces together. You can see that the 3D model itself has these ribs in it, and there's matching ribs on the secondary half. And these are meant to slot together with the help of an adhesive. So what we're gonna do for this process is we're gonna apply an epoxy inside of these slots, and then we'll coat the inside of the container here with an epoxy as well. That's gonna to serve to watertight this whole enclosure so it can hold water during the EDM process. So we'll take this back apart. We have a two-part epoxy. You can pick it up at most hardware stores. When we're performing this task, you might wanna get something like a silicone mat to place under your vat for the actual adhesive application. You could also use paper towels or aluminum foil shop towels, just really anything to keep the epoxy off of whatever your work surface is. We're gonna make sure that we have our PPE on. This is important to keep the epoxy off of your hands. Using disposable gloves is highly recommended. This part is also gonna get kind of messy. Applying the epoxy with your hands or a small wooden tool is usually the best. We're gonna start by mixing the epoxy within the vat itself. Since the epoxy doesn't need to be super accurate when it's applied, it's not touching or retaining any of the work it's okay to mix right in here and then apply it roughly. So I just realized that the warning insert that comes with the power core might be a really good tool for applying this epoxy and mixing it within this. So I'm gonna cut this up and use it as a little mixing stick for this. This is a quick set 15 minute epoxy. So we need to be kind of fast about how we apply it. And it can also help to do that work in stages. So if you can only cover a portion of your vat at a time with the epoxy, that's okay. Epoxy is starting to form some bubbles, so I know that I've mixed it thoroughly enough where it's starting to cure. So I'm gonna get some of that epoxy here, and I'm gonna apply it onto these ribs on the outside. You can be generous with this here. Again, none of the features that are getting covered with epoxy are going to be critical features for actually locating your work or doing your EDM machining. You can even see I got some on the outside, that's okay. The most important part of applying the epoxy is that you get a watertight seal. So I'll place my tool back on my protective surface and we can sort of snap these together now, making sure things are decently flat and that all of those ribs at the top line up. Might be a good idea now to take some of this additional epoxy that you have. You're gonna want to apply it along the internal seams here as well as the bottom. And at this point, you might want to switch away from your tool and just start using your gloves directly. You get more control and it's easier to force the epoxy down into these recesses. We're gonna be going over and doing a secondary step when we coat the rest of the internal part of the vat here, but it's good to start just and get that first layer on there. I'll switch it over to the other side and make sure I drag it up that surface. And if there's any leftover epoxy, in your vat, you can just go and smooth it around the outsides. You might even want to take some of that epoxy that's squishing out from the sides here and just drag it up the outside of your vat. The more we can get into these seams, the better results we're gonna have for that watertighting process. It's been a few minutes since we actually started our application of this set of epoxy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my vat and I'm gonna turn it upside down. We can see that there's some epoxy here on the bottom. We don't want the vat to cure to the surface that we're working on. And while I'm here, I might as well just smooth some of this out too. And I'm gonna leave this alone for another 10 to 15 minutes, just to give it some time to cure. And then we're gonna move on to coating the rest of the interior of the vat. So after letting this cure for a bit, we can take a look at the bottom here. And we can see, okay, everything seems pretty decently cured. And we have the beginnings of our layer inside here. Now, upon closer inspection, I can see that some of this isn't totally cured and that's okay. We're gonna go forward and use most of the rest of this epoxy to fill out and totally seal the interior of this container. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our epoxy again and we're gonna put a generous amount in the container. We'll be sure to mix that thoroughly just like last time. 
you can see that I've really filled up the container with the epoxy here. Get in there and start mixing the epoxy together. That's one of the advantages of being able to mix this directly in the vessel that you're going to be waterproofing, is that you don't have to worry about transferring it later or just trying to get it from one mixing container to the other. Now that I have my epoxy thoroughly mixed, I can just wipe off this tool on the edge of the container. And I'm actually going to use my gloves directly to spread this around the inside of the container. Most epoxies shouldn't be getting hot enough during the curing process to harm you or deform the plastic. If you get a really, really fast setting epoxy, something like a five minute epoxy, that might get quite hot. And you can see inside, I'm going in and I'm just making sure that all of the edges are evenly coated. Make sure you get down onto the faces on every side as well. It's even just been a few minutes here and I'm starting to see the epoxy is slowing down in its movement. This is you know, what you're going to expect through this. As you continue to work, it's going to get more viscous. This is the part of the process where you're gonna to wanna to act quickly. Your goal is to keep the epoxy layer on this shelf here as thin as possible. That's because that's gonna be the base point for your work holding and your jigs. I can feel a good deal of heat coming off of it at this point and you can see that it's starting to solidify onto my hand here. One part to look out for during this process is avoiding getting any epoxy into your Wago bus. That's gonna make it harder for you to actually fit those Wagos in, so we wanna avoid getting too much material in there, if at all possible. And after just a few minutes, my epoxy is actually hardened to the point where it's not flowing at all anymore. And this is where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna take off my gloves, because you can see I'm actually having a bit of trouble getting my hands apart. <laughs> So we're gonna let this set for another few minutes and then we can move on to our next assembly step. Now that the epoxy in the vat's been cured, it's a good time to check whether or not the vat itself is watertight. If we do our water tightness check now, we can make sure that none of the dielectric in the vat will flow onto the machine's motion system or into the motherboard. So we can just take some of our distilled water here. It's what we're gonna be using as dielectric for the wire eating process and we can pour it into the vat. And what we're gonna be looking for are any signs of bubbles or air infiltration through the sides of the 3D prints or through the seam in the vat itself. So we'll just move this around a little bit. And I'm not seeing any bubbles coming through in the water, so I know that this is pretty well water sealed. And if we look below that, there's no evidence of water on the table either. So it looks like we're good to go with getting this onto the machine. With machining, vat assembly, and waterproofing completed, we're gonna move on to vat installation and tool installation in the next video. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at the Discord link below. Our team and many others are there and we're ready to help you troubleshoot.